Uh, so Todd, are you queued up and ready to go? Oh, you betcha. All right, thank you. Jason, this is Anthony just checking in with you. Everything going well? It sounds like it. Looks like it. We're moving right along. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm Todd Fisher. I've been uh, working with a team of engineers at Ridge Run and a team of engineers at Texas Instruments to bring hardware accelerated G-Streamer to several of the DaVinci and OMAP chips, and I'm going to give you a high-level overview of that today. On the left in the picture, you can see the um, Beagle board, and uh, we have G-Streamer running on G Beagle board. Um, the easiest way to get that is to use one of the embedded system conference images, and there are some simple um, examples you can run to get you started. And we are getting GStreamer running on the Leopard Boulder board. We're more or less focused on output and on the Leopard board. Uh, the work that we've done so far is complementing that uh, with the um, CCD sensors, or CMOS sensors, I guess. Can we go to the next slide? So TI is focused on the chip support, and currently there's support for the OMAP 35X, the DM 6446, 6467, uh, the 355, the DM 357, and um, some good work is happening on the DM 365, but it is not part of the uh, release tested um, plugin that you can download from the TI website. The Ridge Run, we are working on the plugin itself and improvements to the plugin. Uh, we've been focusing recently on getting some of the trick play mode, half speed, play double speed, play in reverse, um, skip forward, skip back. We're working on working, getting those working correctly. Uh, recently, we went through the exercise of adding another codec that's not part of the uh, standard uh, codec. Uh, package that runs on the DSP. In this case, it was a DM6446, and we added AAC support. So we went through the whole process of going from the DSP and getting that exposed all the way up at the GStreamer level. And then we've been getting lots of good um, improvements to the community. So if you're interested in audio or video streaming on OMAP or DaVinci chips, um, please uh, join us at gstreamer.ti.com and uh, get involved. So the main focus of the plugin is to make it easy to use the great hardware capabilities on these TI chips. And so they kind of are in four, four areas. Uh, capture, um, so we use the video for Linux 2 interface for video capture and also for audio capture. Then we have compression, decompression, of running, and um, then we also have ac out access to the um, uh, memory copy, uh, frame copy, which is a really critical part. A lot of times when we run into performance problems, it's because there's too much um, ARM processing being done on memory copy, so this allows you to use the hardware accelerator. And then the fourth part is taking advantage of the video output capabilities of these chips. So we're using GStreamer to provide all four of that. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show you a pipeline that I'm hoping um, touches on all four of those pieces uh, that we can talk through. And uh, when? You can use it right now. It's ready for all the chips listed above with the 365 um, still being developed. And uh, the why would you want to do this is because it generates the entire stack, the DSP code, the DSP link, the codec engine, uh, the DMAI interface, all the way up through GStreamer. So it provides that stack for you and makes it much easier for you to be able to be successful in getting hardware accelerated audio and video. Next slide, please, Jason. So the... Uh, uh, so my 10-minute talk, um, I needed to simplify this greatly. And here, here's the, the three-layer cake for you. So um, at the very bottom, we have Kodak Engine and DSP Link, and those are providing DMAI. All of those are providing access to the super-fast hardware we have available. And then we use the G-Streaming media, uh, media 
streaming framework to build your application, and you get to focus on the application and what makes your product different than everybody else's product in the market without having to dig into all the myriad of details associated with audio, video streaming, how to synchronize it, um, streaming to and from files, um, worrying about uh, the details of how to use a container to put your audio and video in, how to stream it over RTSP, for example. Those are all things that the GStreamer framework provides for you. So you can focus on what makes your product different at the application layer. OK, one more. And so here's the um, a little bit more detailed stack that shows you where some of the pieces live that I've been talking about. We'll start over on the right side. This is an OMAP3 uh, specific diagram. So there's DSP link, DSP, um, talking through the DSP BIOS into the what we refer to as the codec bundle. And that has the audio and video encoder decoder code that runs on the C64. And it takes advantage of the hardware accelerator. And if you go and look on the left side, you'll see that DSP link is used by another module called Codec Engine. And that provides a higher level um, ability to instantiate these um, encoders and decoders and pipe data through them. Then moving up, we have the DaVinci Multimedia Application Interface, or DMAI. And that has um, specific APIs for audio, video, uh, display, and as I mentioned earlier, the frame copy. And then you can use the uh, GStreamer libraries. And there's a whole suite of um, standard GM GStreamer libraries you can use. And what we're doing is we're adding the DMAI uh, specific plugin that uses the DaVinci Multimedia Application Interface. And then finally, you have your Linux application running on top of that. So at various places in this diagram, we take advantage of DSP, specific hardware accelerators. Sometimes we're using the uh, Neon extensions to provide the acceleration, acceleration. Or some cases, we're just using the ARM Cortex, for example. In some cases, you might find it easier to use the ARM to do some of the audio decoding, for example, depending on your system configuration. And on the OMAP3, that's been working um, pretty well to have some of it running on the DSP and parts running on the ARM. So that's the, how all the pieces play together. One of the complexities that we're wrestling with is when you try to build the plug-in, it has lots of dependencies on, on a particular layer. Which, and so at times, it's challenging um, to get a correct build. There are some detailed build instructions on uh, the gstreamer.ti.com site, and also uh, the open embedded work has some um, good recipes for simplifying some of this build. It's not 100% uh, completely uh, um, obvious, and part of that is because pieces that you need, you have to download from the TI website, and we haven't been able to automate that yet, but that's in the works as well. So um, don't be intimidated uh, by the build process. Um, it is a little bit challenging initially. Uh, last slide. Oh, I lied. There's two slides left. So what is the DaVinci Multimedia Application Interface? I believe I went over most of this. It just gives a high-level abstraction to the ability to stream audio and video and to display graphics and provides access to the hardware-optimized frame and data copy. And one more. And so here's an example. In this case, it's if you want to have a personal digital video player. And by that, I mean you have, uh, say, an AVI file on your SD card on a Beagle board, and you want to play the movie. So you wouldn't actually generate a product around the GST launch command, but it's just a really simple way to try out um, the various plugins that are available. So GStreamer uses a pipeline concept. And in this syntax, the exclamation point, or bang, is um, separating one element in the pipeline from the next. So you start out with a source, and it works its way to a sync. 